Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential trigonometric equation. We have 4 to the power sine squared x plus 4 to the power cosine squared x equals 5 and we're going to be solving for the x values. We're also going to be looking at a graph at the end. So let's get started. So if you look at this equation first of all one of the things you should notice is the exponents sine squared x and cosine squared x. And what do you know about them? If you've done a little bit of trigonometry, even in middle school, it's done, like basic triangle trigonometry, then you should know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So that is actually the most important identity, I would say, in trigonometry and probably general math. It comes from Pythagorean theorem. There's a lot of different ways to prove it, obviously, but it's a very nice identity. And this allows us to write other identities. For example, if you're dealing with cosine of 2x or cosine of 2 alpha, then, you know, there's three formulas because of this and a couple other things. You can simplify expressions with this, so on and so forth. So it, it's also good because if you know one of the values, you can evaluate the other. Obviously, if you know sine x, there are two values at least that correspond to cosine x because of the square. And in some cases, there are no real solutions because we have a limitation, sine squared and cosine squared, both have to be less than or equal to 1. This equation also indicates that because the sum of two squares equals 1, in meaning that uh, none of them can be greater than 1. Okay? If, of course, x is real. So, let's go ahead and take a look at it from a real perspective. So, since I have this identity, I'm able to, you know, just uh, replace one of these with the other. So, let's go ahead and do with cosine squared x. Let's isolate cosine squared x from the equation, from the identity. So, subtract sine squared. So, you can write cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared. And then just substitute that. Okay, let's do it. 4 to the power sine squared x plus 4 to the power cosine squared, which will be replaced with 4 to the power 1 minus sine squared x. At this point, obviously, or at the very beginning, it's okay to guess and check our work. And I'm pretty sure you've done uh, that and you've gotten some solutions. But are those all the solutions? How many solutions are there? We're going to take a look at it and also at the graph. So, now this equation is much better than the original one because we only have a single variable, namely sine squared x. Now what we're going to do next is using properties of exponents. We're going to write this difference of exponents as a quotient. So we're going to write it as 4 to the power sine squared x plus 4 to the power 1 divided by 4 to the power sine squared x. Because when you divide powers with the same base, you basically subtract the exponents. So we're kind of use uh, we're using that rule backwards, right? So a to the power m divided by a to the n is a to the power m minus n, and of course you can use it either way. So far so good. Now we are going to do substitution. Obviously substitution is going to be helpful. Let's go ahead and call this something. How about t? T is a good variable, right? It's also a good drink. T plus four over t equals 5. And again, you can definitely guess at this point because this is going to turn into a quadratic equation. Very easy to solve. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by t. t not being 0, obviously. t squared plus 4 equals 5t. And then t squared minus 5t plus 4 is equal to 0. Great. So we got ourselves a quadratic equation. Notice that the transformations are really nice, even though they're very basic. I think it's important, especially for people who are starting to learn algebra and a little bit of trigonometry. This is helpful, hopefully. Let me know what you think. But we kind of have a non-standard sort of like an exponential trigonometric equation or trigonometric exponential equation or mixture of both. And then we kind of turn it into a really nice quadratic. So this is a lot of improvement, don't you think? Okay. So now we're going to write this as t minus 1 times t minus 4. Hopefully you've seen that the sum of the coefficients is 0. Therefore, t equals 1 is a solution. And the other one follows automatically by Vieta's formulas or otherwise. Anyways, from here, t equals 1. To keep a long story short, I know I kept it too long. And t equals 4. Okay. Now what are we going to do with this, right? What is t? 
T is 4 to the pi of sine squared. So that's the power of substitution. You take something complicated, well, at least T is simpler than that, and then turn it into something simple. And then you solve, and then you got a back substitute, right? Don't forget to do that. And always keep track of things. That's why I kind of circle, box, you know, take note on all these things. So if T is equal to 1, T is 4 to the power sine squared X. So let's go ahead and deal with this value first, and then we'll take care of t equals 4 later. Now, how can I interpret this? 4 to the power of something equals 1. Obviously, the obvious way to do it is write the 1 as 4 to the power 0, right? Because any non-zero number to the power 0 equals 1, and it's even true for non-real numbers like i to the power 0. It's also 1, right? Well, in most cases. So, what do we do with this? Well, we have the bases that are equal, so naturally we should say sine squared equals zero. And from here, only one thing follows because there's only one number whose squared equals zero, and that is zero. If sine x is equal to zero, we can basically write this as, now think about it, where is sine zero? Sine is zero here and here. So how do you write that, right? I mean, sine x, you can write sine pi over two. So from here, we can basically write, hey, x equals, pi over 2, but we should also not forget to add multiples of pi, because when you add pi to pi over 2, like keep adding pi, multiples of pi, then you're going to get all the solutions. There are infinitely many solutions. You're going to see all of these on the graph, by the way. Hopefully, hopefully this is going to be uh, making more sense when you see the graph, but we'll save it for the end. Now, that's one of the solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. By the way, we did not introduce any extraneous solutions because we didn't square both sides. Just got to be careful about that. So the second t value we're going to be looking at is t equals 4 from here. This is t equals 1. Now we're going to look at t equals 4. So open a new page. t equals 4. What is t? 4 to the power sine squared x. And 4 can be written as 4 to the first power. From here we get sine squared x equals 1. And this gives us two results. Sine x is either 1 or sine x is negative 1. Wow, interesting, right? Well, this kind of gives us all the corners or special values, right? If sine x is equal to 1, think about it. It can be pi over 2, right? Because that's where it's 1 and nowhere else. So to this, we have to add multiples of what? 2 pi, right? So it's kind of like 2k pi. And then here, negative 1 means it's going to be here, which is 3 pi over 2. And then we're going to add again, because you can't add multiples of pi, because that's going to bring you, well, actually you could. So I believe, uh, let's just write it this way. And then you can think about it this way too, but like the first one gave us what? The first one gave us uh, pi over 2. Actually, that's not correct, because at pi over 2, it's equal to, okay, never mind. I messed up on this one, the first one. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back and fix. This one is good, but the first one wasn't good. So I just realized that, and I'm not going to, Cut this part so you can see that I make mistakes. Yeah, well, that shouldn't be a surprise, right? I make a lot of mistakes. Anyways, sine x equals 0 gives us a sine of uh, 0. And then I should write 0 for this plus n pi, right? Let's see if that's going to uh, work. Well, 0 is here. And then if you add multiples of pi to it, yes, you're going to hit 0 again. So this should be good. So 0 plus n pi and then these two can be basically represented by if you start at pi over 2 and just add uh, like k pi to it, like multiples of pi, you're going to be able to hit both this one and that one. So it's going to be good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up with that. Here's the graph of y equals 4 to the power of sine squared x plus 4 to the power of cosine squared x. That intersects y equals 5 at several points, obviously infinitely many, two of which I showed here. 0 and pi over 2, and then you were going to have pi, obviously, and then the 3 pi over 2, because remember, it was 0 plus multiples of pi. And notice also that the minimum, I mean, the maximum, you know what I mean, right? The maximum value for this function is 5, and you can also prove that. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.